Hi everybody. Thank you for joining us in the Hobby Hangout for another Tutorial Thursday. We've got a session here tonight with Caleb Wisson back from CK Studios. And I'm going to do a little bit different today. He's going to be under the hood. He's going to be inside his airbrush station showing us a little bit about light modulation and how we can create some really cool effects with volume and shape with that. Um, without further ado, I'd like to say come and join us in the Hobby Hangout group if you haven't joined us before for more tips and tricks and everything that the community shares there in our group. And I'm going to turn it over to you, Caleb. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is Caleb with CK Studios. And um, tonight we're going to talk about modulation and how to create shape and volume. This kind of came up in a conversation earlier today. Um, where we were talking on Hobby Hangout. Uh, if you guys don't haven't had a chance to get on Hobby Hangout, um, definitely do. I'm assuming you guys know what Hobby Hangout is if you're in a Hangout or if you're watching this, but um, we get a lot of conversations in there, and this is kind of how we carry through with a lot of uh, determining what I, I'm going to teach each week is kind of what stuff is is relevant to you guys. So you guys do have questions, if there's stuff that you guys want to talk about or whatever. Don't hesitate to post and ask. Um, if you want to tag me into a message or whatever, go ahead and do that, and uh, and we'll get we'll try to answer it. And if it's something that we can um, do a video on, we'll definitely sit in and do a video on it. So um, tonight, I want to talk about color modulation. Um, modulation really is what it is. It's, it's it's how we collect light. There's there's roughly three styles of of color modulate or of modulation I guess that you would call it is light of course we have zenithal which is um you know we're, we're really aware of zenithal it's it's constantly surrounded where that's like a direct light right from the top it's zenith or zenithal the other one that we have is natural light and that's going to be kind of an ambient light it's going to be a, a light that surrounds an, an area um, I think I like to mention it like if you were um, outside on a overcast day how we don't have a direct sunlight and everything like that. We have a very diffused light. And so that's going to create kind of a nice um, natural, very smooth light. It's going to be very soft. We're not going to get a lot of volume, a lot of movement. When we're painting miniatures, we try not to use that style too much because um, it makes a very uninteresting model. Um, but one way that we can really create interest, and this, is, this helps a lot with science fiction models, is by doing what's called uh, color modulation or light modulation and what we're going to do is we're going to modulate the color we're going to modulate the light that comes off of each surface of the model um i have to share and where did i pick that picture again I'm awesomely organized when i'm doing this but um, i'm going to look this find this picture real quick Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what I did with it. Anyways, um, what I wanted to to do, and I'll have Cat posted up later on, is um, is just a it's it's a nice example picture of the different styles of modulation that we're going to do. But ultimately, what we're after is we're going to break each surface up, and we're going to create a variation in light from light to dark, light to dark. Um, we're going to vary it. It's a very unnatural light. It's not something that you would normally see. A lot of times when I'm doing this, this kind of modulation, I like to put my shadows at the top, which is kind of counterintuitive, counter but it creates a lot of interest. The nice thing that we can do is we can control the eye and we can create a lot of dynamicism and movement with the model. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. It's kind of brief discussion. Um, the things that we'll need is we're going to need some masking tape, of course. I like to use, I'm painting on a metallic a metallic painted model, so I'm going to use some inks. Um, I like the inks the best because inks are transparent and they'll show the color underneath. Most of the times when I'm create, creating modulation, I'm going to use an ink or a wash to do it. I don't do it too often with paint. I mean, I, I will do it with paint, and there there are some instances where I, I need to, but a lot of times I'll do it with uh, an ink or, or a wash. I like to do that a little bit more because it like tints. So it doesn't necessarily wipe out everything that you put down, but it'll just kind of tint it. It'll give it that, that 
change in tone or change in color. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over cameras, and then uh, we'll look at the model that we're going to work on today, and then I'll talk about uh, the color modulation. Okay, so here we are, and I apologize that this is going to be upside down for you. So I'm going to be coming in from the top of the screen down. Um, it'll be a little odd looking, but I, hopefully you guys can still kind of follow. Um, I haven't quite figured out how to flip images on Google Hangouts, and the setup for my paint booth, the camera has to sit upside down. Um, so if anybody knows how to do that or has some insight on it, let me know. Um, it probably just means I'm going to have to order up like a boom camera holder. Um, other than that, it's pretty simple. I'm going to have my airbrush. I'm using a finer detail airbrush tonight. I'm going to use um, an airbrush that's got a 0.2 nozzle on it. I want to use some finer detail because I'm going to be painting on this um, gray night. I'm going to be painting on this gray night, and uh, it's a little bit smaller of the surface. Now, um, the guy that I was talking to this today, he's painting on a Titan, and he's going to do some metallics and uh, some of the leg plates and stuff like that. So he could probably get away with using a bigger brush on it. The nicer thing about the finer brush is that our dots are going to be a lot smaller. Um, so we'll get better transitions. We'll get smoother transitions. The other thing I'm going to use is I'm going to use a couple of inks. I'm using Sapphire from Secret Weapon. This is kind of an opaque ink. Um, if you do use the GW washes, you'll notice they're compared to like, or I mean, I'm sorry, if you use the secret weapon washes compared to like the GW washes, you're going to notice they're a little, a slightly less transparent, um, just kind of in the system that they use. I still like using them a lot. And then, of course, I'm using the Dollar Room. You guys hear me talk about this a lot. This one is Payne's Gray. It's kind of a blue based black. This is going to be my deepest shadow. Um, so, what we're looking at is on this model here is I want to create some variation. I want the light to move on this model. So it doesn't look so flat, so one tone. I mean, that's what happens when we paint a, a plastic model and we put non-metallic metal or meta metallic paint onto it. What inevitably happens is that we have now painted a model that looks like it's painted plastic, right? Even if even though you you sprayed the metal on it, it doesn't look like metal. It doesn't reflect like metal. It doesn't work like metal. So we're going to kind of exaggerate that to create a little more interest and stuff like that. So what's happening here is like as we look at this leg panel here, it's very flat. It's very monotone. It's got the same values all the way around. But we want to come in and we want to actually create these shadows that we would normally see in metallic. If this was a full size, it'd definitely start to reflect a lot more. Um, <clears throat> so to do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to take my brush. I'm going to take just a little bit of this wash and I'll add just a touch of my thinner to it. I want the the paint to, or the, the ink to come out pretty smooth um, and spray down pretty well, lay down nice and nice and flat. So to do that, I'm just going to thin it just a touch. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to start to, to to base out my air. So I'm going to work on this panel here and this panel here. So you notice here, I'm going to come in and I'm just going to kind of use the angle of the model. I don't really need the mask quite yet um, because this is kind of more of a bulk paint. And you see how when I turn that model, you can kind of start to see um, exactly what it's looking like. I mean, fix this real quick. Um, you can kind of see right here that I'm starting to get that, that variation of tone. It's a little light at first, and that's with the inks because we're going to slowly build it up. We don't want to go in with these inks and instantly spray to like pure opacity because um, what will happen is it will start to kind of bubble up and we'll start to get these little collections of, of the, the ink. So we want to be real gentle. I've got my air pressure a little lower than what I normally shoot. I'm, I'm down around 10 or so. I'm not really cranking the, the paint up or the air pressure up. I want to be just kind of soft with it. Um, I'm going to come in and start working on this, this little leg plate and create a little variation on this. I don't know what this would be. I guess it would be like the four foot. So I'm creating a little variation there. Now I come to the toes. Um, the toes, I have to kind of slow down just a touch because I want to separate each panel of this toe. If you look at, at this toe here, I have this panel and this panel and this panel. So I want to create a variation between these three to, to create some interest. So this is really where that 
that modulation comes into effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mask off the top surface because, again, I want to put my modulation at the top of the foot. So I'll mess that off. <laughs> Excuse me. I'll mess that off. And then you'll notice the majority of my spray is going to be on that masking. And then I'll slowly walk it down onto the toe. Oop. That's a little bit too much, but that's okay. We can come back and adjust that by just lightly spraying. Okay, so now that I've created that modulation there, now I want to take and I want to make sure that that's dry before I put my masking tape over it. But once we're, once we're pretty confident with that, I'm going to mask that surface off now. And I'll go down to the next surface of the toe. And I'll do the same thing. I'm just going to shoot the very top of this toe. I'm just lightly spraying. Once I'm happy with that, I'll come in and I'll, I'll pull that up. So now that you, you can start to see that modulation, well, there we go. The light was reflecting quite a bit. But you see how that, that modulation works? How now I'm, I'm creating each step of the toe. It's, it's going to create a lot more interest to the model. Now, another way that I can do that, if I'm not going to mask, and I'll do it on the side here, is I can use the angle of the airbrush to mask for me. So. We lost your sound, Caleb. Oh. It keeps muting me off. Weird. Um, can you hear me now? No? Yeah, I can hear you. I can. Yeah. Okay. All right. I don't know why it, it was like auto muting. That was odd. Um, what I was talking about was. I'm going to shoot the, at, at this angle right here with the airbrush. And the airbrush only hits what it can see. So as I spray on there, I can use actual, the actual shape of the model to create that, that masked edge. So instead of putting masking down, I can kind of maneuver the model around and create those edges that way too. So here, just by shooting this way, if you look at the toe on this side, you see how it's, it's very blue. But then as I roll it this way, you can see how I... It, it created a really nice large line. Um, somebody's mic is on and it's feeding back. I just have to mute out. There we go. Or, or put headphones on or something like that. So <clears throat> I've created the initial movement of the model. So you can see that this knee pad has got a lot more movement compared to this knee pad. It's got a lot more volume and stuff like that. That's what we're kind of looking for with that color modulation. Now I'll take that a step further. I'll clear my brush. And then I'm going to come in with an even darker tone now and create a, just a little bit more contrast. So now I'm going to be even more gentle than I, than I was before. I, I want to just, if I can get some ink in here, that pop's starting to wear out. But um, I want to just touch the very outside edge of what I sprayed already. I don't want to. <clears throat> erase everything I sprayed. I just want to hit that edge. So again, I'm going to come in and and um, right here by just spraying right here, I'm going to hit just the top edge of that corner. I don't really need to put too much masking in um, because again, I, I'm using the the model to shield itself at the very top of the knee, right in here. I'm going to put in a little bit more of that darker Payne's gray. And then right in here, um, this just kind of is like a learning curve. The more the more you practice this, 
the better feel you'll get for where you really need to put your shadows and really where you really need to put your light. Um, but you'll notice that that once you really put in these dark these dark areas, it'll really make your model come alive. <clears throat> so again, I need to come in and do that same thing with the masking. So I'll place this initial masking piece here. Now you can do this with any type of masking that you like. For this, I like masking tape because it's just nice and fast. But um, if you like liquid mask, you can go through and, and do one panel and then liquid mask it off and then do a second panel and then liquid mask it off. Do another panel like that. Or um, uh, you can, you know, a lot of people will use like blue tack or something like that. Um, the blue tack works really good like in, in oddly curved areas because you can actually get in with your knife and kind of adjust where they're going to fit. Um, <clears throat> but for, for, this, for this model, uh, it, it's just a lot easier with, with just the, uh, the, the regular masking tape. So again, I'm going to show you this um, working with the angles and how it, it's going to create a brighter area. The other thing that I'm doing, and I didn't talk about it earlier, is, is for every light panel, every bright panel, the start of the next panel is going to be dark. I'm going to alternate it. So that's really where that color modulation comes in, is I want to meet a dark panel with a light panel. So um, it's almost like the non-metallic metals. When you're doing non-metallic metals, how, how we'll start off with with a, a panel that, that deviates from dark to light. The next panel, wherever that light spot is, where that meets the next panel where those two joints are, that following panel, we want that to be dark. And that will, create, that will help carry the eye and create movement. Like on this foot here, you can see that I have that light to dark transition. And then I start, I start dark to light again. So, so here it's dark to light dark to light, dark to light, dark to light. But then here I have this lighter panel here. So this panel needs to be much darker. You're gonna notice the overall, the whole tone of that, of that toe is much darker than the other one. And what it does is it draws the eye forward. And then because each of these dark panels, our eye actually catches the dark line instead of the highlight line. And it's gonna carry our eye up the model. So when we're looking at this model, once it's finished, our eye will carry up. So we, we'll, we can create movement that way. Um, create shape and movement that way. <clears throat> the other thing we can do is create shape and movement and, and create volumes or, or shape um, by coming in and creating shadows to, to accentuate things. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to come in and I'm going to lightly hit these areas. And here I don't have to be real careful because I'm going to, I'm going to come in and I'm just, working the bottom edge of this model i don't have to i don't have to worry too much about masking see how up above it's going to look silver if we turn it down it's going to look really black but then when we turn it sideways we start to get that movement and shape and this is going to help us too so it's the same thing as the color modulation but instead of being really straight panels i'm going to create movement and shape with round panels so like on this shoulder pad here i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to come in and i'm going to create more of a shadow here, even though this is the forward facing of the shoulder pad, by coming in and putting shadow on both sides, we're creating shape of that, that shoulder pad. The more, I, the more I concentrate on it, the darker I can get in the corner. And that'll really help with creating that movement and shape. And then again, we wanna come back in and vary our color. So I normally will just swap out uh, or I'll normally just come in and I'll do all of one color and then I'll clear my airbrush and I'll do another color. I usually don't run two airbrushes for this and do two separate colors, but here I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that just a little bit. I'm gonna come in now with that lighter blue and right along where I shot that dark shadow, I'm just gonna put a little bit of lighter shadow into it. too heavy and now we have that really nice modulation and movement you can see how nice and dark and deep that crevice where that where that pilot's going to sit is it'll really present that pilot by by going really dark in there and then again look at the shoulder pad and look at how how good the movement is right there very simple with the airbrush we're, we've created nice movement and stuff like that we don't need to spend a lot of time on blending um, trying to create 
panels and stuff like that. We can just go in with the airbrush with the with the, these inks, um, the transparency of them. It's going to allow us to to kind of create the movement and everything without spending a lot of time. Um, so that's pretty much in a whole what I want to show you guys is um, just how to do some color modulation. Uh, so I can guess I can kind of come back over to the camera and we'll open it up for any questions that you guys might have. And I, I'm going to clean my brush real quick while I'm talking to you guys so it doesn't set up in here. But um, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask. <clears throat> what kind of um, inks are you using? Um, I, I use the secret weapon um, for the blue. Mm -hmm. it's, sa it's the sapphire color. Um, I really like the color density and the, the range of colors that the secret weapons have. Um, the, like I said, the only issue is that sometimes they're a little more opaque than some of the other colors. But I love his range of colors. A, a big range of colors. I hate that the tips always clog on me and I end up blowing that stuff all over the place. If you played with secret weapon washes, you guys probably know what I'm talking about. Um, but I, I, I use them quite often. I, I really like his, his color choices that it gives me the options that I have. And then um, for the darker color, it was the Dalaroni again. So you guys, the more you guys get on these hangouts with me, the more you'll see the Dalaronis. They are, they are by far my favorite ink. Are, are you thinning the Dalaronis? Uh, I will. I didn't on, on this one. Um, they don't need to be thin. Um, Dalaronis are very pigment dense. So every once in a while, I'll thin them down just a little bit because of how dense they are with the pigment. Um, but for the most part, no, I don't need to, to thin them down. I can I can shoot them as is. What needle are you sh uh, shooting with? What size? I, I'm shooting with the 2.0. Okay. Um, I was using the Grex uh, XG, uh, XGI? Yeah. XGI, exactly. yeah. The Grex XGI and then the Infinity 2-in-1, both of them with the point, point 0.2. The Grex might be like a point 0.21 or something like that. I don't remember exactly. But it's it's the fine needle that I I like that because our dots are going to be a lot smaller, and when we're create when we're shooting these color variations, I want to have as small dots as possible. So I'll use like my Sotar or my Infinity or my uh, XGI, something like that to to shoot those really fine dots. Now the uh, the Sotar has what a, a point three needle, right? Point point two zero also. Is it a point two? Okay, so you would you yeah, would you could, it out pretty much the same way as you would with that Grex then. Yeah, yeah, they're all gonna they're all roughly gonna shoot the same. Um, we're looking, like I said, we're looking for that really fine dot. That's the difference between like a point two, or a point three, or a point four. Um, by by thinning your paints and reducing your air pressure, they'll all pretty much shoot the same line. Because some people think, oh, if I go with a thinner, uh, a, a smaller nozzle size, that I'll get a, I'll, I'll be able to shoot like a finer line. They'll all pretty much shoot the fine, finer line. Um, but what happens is that the dots that it sprays, the little dots, are finer. They're smaller, and that's why I like the the smaller uh, airbrush nozzle size. Is I just want those finer dots. It, it gives me a smoother transition. Do you find when shooting over those metallics? Um... The, the glossiness of these uh, secret weapons paints actually helps? Yeah, that's the reason I'm using an ink and not a regular paint. If I do the same thing with a regular paint and I thin it down and make a wash with it, um, that paint's going to dry semi-flat, and it gives weird shadows. You, Whenever I'm doing metallics, I always shoot an ink or something because of the glossy finish. It, 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 one, it, it allows, because it's transparent, it allows the, the metallic reflection through a little bit, but then also your shadows will have a gloss to them and it doesn't look really weird. Um, that, that's kind of what got me started on using the inks was trying to shoot over metallics. And now I shoot them on everything. And then usually when I'm done, I'll, I'll come in and I'll hit them with like a, a dull coat or something so that it ties the glossy inks to a regular, more flat, um, uh, standard acrylic paint. I'll just yeah. I'll just hit it, hit it with a dull coat or uh, any of the flat matte matte finish sprays. Food for thought. Very cool. 
<clears throat> what are some of the other applications you can use for the um, light modulation? I, I mean, you can use it for everything. Um, the The modulation style that I was using um, mm -hmm. is, is is really nice for science fiction vehicles. Um, when you start to put these on like historical vehicles, they start to look funny because our eye our eye sees historical vehicles. We've seen photos of them, we've seen pictures, stuff like that. So it's more that's more realistic. Um, so if we're, I was doing that, I'd want to do more of like a zenithal style. And we can still use movement and shape. I'm just not going to use um, he as heavy contrast. And I'm definitely not going to try to put my shadows at the very top. Um, maybe like along the turret of a tank, I might put my shadows at the very top um, just to create some movement up onto the turret. But it's not going to be like super, super contrast hot heavy. It's going to have a nice, a nice smooth gradation instead of like you, you saw on this model. It, it, it went from bright silver to blue to almost black. So there's a huge color range there with, with really heavy contrast. I want to be a little softer on like a historical vehicle or something like that. But for sci-fi vehicles, it, it looks awesome. It's, it's the best way to do it. Very cool. How does it translate across to um, brush work if you're not doing an airbrush? Same thing. You're just going to have to do a lot of blending. Um, you're going to do it just like your regular blending styles. Um, just, just you want to, you want to start to try to create that shape. So again, if it's that rounded leg plate, we want to be to the sides. And then you, if you notice, it, um, I'll switch cameras again real quick. So here you'll notice that it's the sides. Oops, there it is. It's the sides and then also the top. Here it's a little less noticeable, but I hit the sides really heavy and then I allowed it to walk across the top a little bit. I still need this area to be brighter, but it has a modulation from bright to just a little bit darker up here. But I want to make sure that the sides are the darkest and then it comes up and then here they can, because these are just flat panels, I can just go in flat. Sometimes I'll cut these at an angle because this is like the lead toe and, and my eye is going to go up the model like this. I'll do these ones flat, but like on these side ones, I might vary that shadow. So that, that shadow might turn and go at an angle now, like at a degree angle. So my darkest shadow would be right here with lighter variation here. My brightest shadow, my brightest highlight would be right here. Um, what that's going to do is it's going to draw the eye back in. It's going to create more vectors up this way so so my eye is coming back to center and then it'll follow the leg plates up to the model um, but it's that, kind of creating that triangle thing you've talked about before um <clears throat> no well no not really not really like the the, the triangle of, of of points um this is more of like the vectors that i talk about this would be more vectoring because I'm bringing the I'm bringing the eye across the model and I'm vectoring it up. Oh, cool! So, so what 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 Kat is mentioning is in in our uh, our figure class, the display quality figure class. We talk about composition. We talk about the different techniques that you can use in composition. One of them is called vectoring. We're going to use we're going to use hard lines and angles to force the eye up to the focal point of the model. Um, and then what there is is also triangles where we'll use like a complementary color or something like that and we'll frame the model so that our eye is drawn back to the focus. And if our eye starts to vary away from the focus, we'll catch one of those dots and follow it back in. Um, so that's all kind of figure, um, that's more of like the competition and display um, figure uh, composition. Yeah, it's the composition of it. Um, so. I got a, I got another direct message, and it's from someone who says that they are a new painter and new to the hobby. And so, just in reading the title, they weren't sure what you meant by modulation. Okay. Um, I really need to find that picture real quick. Hold on one second. I think I can just email it to me. I know it's on my phone. Uh, so sorry, sorry, I'm not better prepared. Uh, my phone's updating. Is it the one that you shared with Bill today? Yeah, do you have that? I do. From the chat? Mm -hmm. I do, I do. 
can you share on your screen? The lighting styles, is that what you're saying? Yep, yep, that's the one. <clears throat> can you speak to it a little bit? Yeah, if, if you can bring it up and share it on your screen, and then okay. I'll, I'll kind of explain it. <clears throat> so I've got it for full screen for me. My laptop's been slow. There we go. It's sweet. It's still you. Well, hold on. I haven't got there yet. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, I just got black screen. There it is. Okay. So, so if you notice, you have at the bottom you have Zenithal highlighting. Um, that's kind of your standard highlight technique um, for light. That's what we would do, like if we were painting the historical view. I was talking about that. Something a little more realistic. Um, we're gonna we're gonna still use it to draw light. And if you notice, e the, the light still goes up to where the turret would be on the tank. This is like a uh, approximation of a Sherman body, um, a Sherman tank. Um, so in the first one, we have that approximation of light right at the center. It still is kind of guiding us to where the focus of the vehicle would be, like a, a tank would be, the focus would be um, the weapon usually. Um, on like a figure, a human figure or a monster or something, the focus is usually the face, the head of the model. Um, so the next one we have is called panel lighting. And that's where each panel um, the variation of light moves to the center of each panel. This is a technique that you don't see too often like in tanks and stuff like that, but you're going to see this on aircraft a lot. Um, when you see some of the historical aircraft and stuff like that, you'll see this style of panel lighting. It kind of draws attention to the shape and movement of it. We still need to vary in shadows. We need um, our, our shadows to move so that we, we have more shape and movement. We still want volume. The panel lighting is difficult to do that with. We're not going to get as much volume and as much shape. If you know the zenithal lighting, we get nice shape of the turret, or I mean of the body of the tank. The last one, which is what I'm talking about, is modulation. You'll notice that each panel modulates from, from a bright tone to a dark tone. And where a bright tone meets the following panel, we have that dark tone. So you'll see that transition as you look at where the turret is. We have where, where the light section of a panel meets the next panel, we start with dark and we carry that down. And what that does is it creates forward movement. So if you look at the very top piece, it almost looks like it's moving. Um, it's probably moving more left to right. Um, if we were to switch those shadows, like I was talking about, and I put the shadow at the top of the panel instead of the bottom, you'll notice that that, that that exact same piece would start to move from right to left instead, because as we move, our eye tends to move from light to, from light to dark, which creates that 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 idea of movement, um, and that's what we're after. But you'll notice that the modulation, the very top one, it's a very <coughs> excuse me, it's a very unrealistic looking um, lighting system. So we want to be careful when we use it. Like I said, sci-fi vehicles love it. They look so good when they're done in that style. It, it kind of lends itself to the whole mm. sci-fi genre. Um, rhinos and land raiders and, and all that stuff look really good with it. Whereas if we're doing a, a Sherman or a Tiger or something, we probably want to do more of the Xenophil lighting. Um, I'll do some mix some mixing between the modulation and <laughs> the modulation and the Xenophil light. Um, I'll do a little mix on that when I'm doing like a historical vehicle, just to, to create a little bit more shape and a little bit more movement, um, but not too much. Like I said, I, I wouldn't go with really heavy contrasts. So hopefully that answered your question. Yep, I think that nailed it. Let's see if I can stop sharing this. There we go. Okay. And would you say that... Um, for the different the different styles you were talking about here, you had modulation, panel lighting, and zenithal lighting. Uh -huh. Is there a different way of priming for these? Like for me, it, an obvious go-to for zenithal lighting would be a zenithal prime. Um, is there any way that you can kind of help 
speed up the process in creating some of these effects in the way that you prime your model, or is that just moot for the underpainting? If you're going to do zenithal style, then you can definitely use like varying degrees of highlight shadows and kind of pre-shadow. Um, mm -hmm. With the problem with modulation is you can't just spray directly over the top of the vehicle. I mean, you can still do that, and it's going to make the top of the vehicle lighter than the bottom. Um, mm -hmm. You still mm -hmm. want to to look at the model at a whole and do that that spheres where we're we're painting in spheres. Um, if you don't understand that, what I'm talking about with spheres, if you want to go back and look on the YouTube, the Hobby Hangout YouTube, there's one that we did on 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 a composition, and it talks about the spheres and how we we compose a model so that the top of the model, the focus of the model, is brighter than the unnecessary areas of the model, the feet, the back of the cloak, things like that. Um, so by zenithal priming like that and doing that pre-shading, yeah, it'll speed up a little bit of time, but with the airbrush, you know, I like to, to prime in black anyways and then work my way up in colors. It gives me that, that bigger variation of tonal values. So um, like when I'm doing vehicles and stuff, I'm not gonna really worry about doing any type of certain priming. I'm going to prime it black and then start airbrushing. Just go. OK, very cool. Anybody else? Let me, let me check our page real quick. Uh, I need uh, inspiration. Hmm? Oh, Pandios was asking a question. But it doesn't pertain to the class, so. We can wait oh. until we're, we're done with the live portion. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Okay. Well, I, I think that'll do it for us then tonight for our tutorial. So thank you for joining us for Thursday night tutorials. Um, hopefully we'll get back into the swing. I know we've been gone for a little bit. There's just been a lot going on. Um, I'm going to try to do next Thursday. We, we traveled to Texas on Friday. <laughs> so um, we'll, we'll let you know next week more. <laughs> If, if we're gonna well, make it or not. We'll, we'll let you know if I can. I'll be packing. Yeah, Kat will be packing and stuff. Um, so if not, expect us the following week that we should get pretty regular on mm -hmm. that. Um, the next, I think the next one that I want to do is the blending. So I, I think I'd like to do that one next, Kat. What do you think? Sounds good. Because of blending, why not? So, That'd be awesome, actually. Yeah. So um, again, that's it for tonight. If you have any questions on this, feel free to message us at Hobby Hangout, or you can reach us over at CK Studios. Um, just send us your questions, and we'd be happy to answer them. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Caleb, and we'll Thank see you, all of you guys out at the Hobby Hangout. Good night. Take care.